Well, yeah, thanks for coming over again, Marvin. I can always count on you whenever I have YouTubers block. Yeah, man, no problem. Wait a minute. Oh my gosh, I love you too! Um, what? I love you too! Mar Marvin, I, I never said I love you. No, you dolt, I meant your U2 CDs! Oh, 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 yeah, those. Hey, wait a minute, that gives me an idea. U2, the Forrest Gump of bands in the sense that they've lived through decades of American history and documented it by making songs about it. And the other 80% of the time, they were just your everyday pop rock group. Except, they're awesome. Now, I often joke that U2 can't make a bad song, and then I listen to Get On Your Boots. But who cares? Uh, Every artist makes a dud from time to time. Uh, what we're focusing on today is my top 10 favorite U2 songs of all time. Starting with number 10, we have what I think is one of the most underrated U2 songs ever. And you'll come to find that most of the songs on this list were pretty big hits. Uh, I'm kind of basic. And this one sticks out like a sore thumb. And what's more is that this song come, uh, came off arguably their best album, Joshua Tree. Uh, no U2 fan says that any other album's better than that. It's just kind of a known fact. Like, you don't, you don't refute that. Anyways, um, number 10 is none other than Mothers of the Disappeared. It's a dreary and dark five-minute song about those who lost their children in the regimes of Central and Southern America. And one thing I love about U2 is that a lot of their songs have rich historical and political commentary, and this is something I actually bring up in my Emotion Fusion video. Uh, considering some of U2's biggest songs are about tragic historical events, like what takes place in The Mothers of the Disappeared, I'm very surprised that it's not more well-known. It's the perfect closing to a near-perfect album. Now with this list, I wanted to include songs from across all of U2's lifespan. So I've split their discography into three eras. The classic era, which is the inception of the band uh, to Joshua Tree slash Rattle and Hum. Rattle and Hum is kind of a bridge. The mid era, which is Octung Baby to All That You Can't Leave Behind. Uh, and then the modern era, uh, which is everything beyond 2000. Uh, I'd say that I did a pretty good job at covering all three of these eras. So for number nine, I have a song from How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb. Now this is an okay album. Uh, I think I would have enjoyed it more if I hadn't had a headache the time uh, I listened to it. Uh, anyways, this song is at number the number the song at number nine is the City of Blinding Lights. This is probably the song that jumped out to me uh, most on this album. It, it's the song that could only be done by U2. It's just one of those songs that like when you listen to it, you're like, yeah, this is a song that U2 would make and none other band really could. Uh, and this is what I call a night song because atmospherically it fits at night. It has this feeling of freedom, this ambiance of walking through the streets of a big city in the dark. Um, which, I mean, the, the title of the song and some of the lyrics kind of uh, make sense to that. Besides this song, I feel like most of the tracks on Atomic Bomb are somewhat forgettable besides this one, but I really like this song. Okay, so not many people like newer U2 music. I feel like that's just kind of a, a thing. Um, like, you, people love to hate U2 now, which I never get. I was talking to one of my friends, and they were like, yeah, I hate U2. And I was like, geez, why? And their reasoning was basically because they didn't like that, um... The Songs of Innocence album came preloaded on every Apple product imaginable. And I can understand that. It did seem like a little bit of a cheap cash grab. Uh, and it did turn away a lot of fans, I feel. As much as I resent this album for that, which actually I realize I don't, I really don't care. Um, it's a good album, so I don't, I guess I, it, I it's an okay album, I guess. Um, it, it's not a bad album, that's for sure, so I don't really, I don't care about it being on there. I'm very quick to defend it. And one song on it was so good that it actually cracked my top 10. And this is the number eight one. It was uh, the one song that connected with me on this album, which makes sense because I'm pretty sure it's the big hit off of this album. And the song is The Miracle of Joey Ramone. And don't ask me what part of that title is in parentheses. I don't remember. <laughs> you can tell by its sound that this is a newer U2 song, and in some ways, it gets a little bit too close to uh, sounding like a modern music for comfort. Um, I'm not even sure what the song is about, but it sounds like Bono is singing about having his faith in humanity restored by something he heard. Besides that, the music is actually pretty great in this song. The guitar and drums seem to be more prominent in this song than most other U2 songs, which is saying a lot, because the edge usually brings a lot to the table with his guitar playing, uh, but in this song especially, it's impossible to ignore. Really, the only redeeming song from this album, I guess, uh, and it makes the controversy about being on an album all Apple users are forced to have just a little more tolerable. Now, the number seven on my list is very interesting because it appeared in a movie four years before it came 
um, as far as released on their 2017 album, Songs of Experience. Uh, most people at this point know what song I'm talking about, at least I think. Maybe only, like, the diehard U2 fans like me. Uh, but it's none other than Ordinary Love, arguably U2's biggest hit in recent years. It first debuted on the soundtrack of Mandela, the biopic of, well, take a guess. Uh, this is just the kind of music an older band makes in modern times, and it's really cool, cool. Um, it has a, a newer feel to it, but still finds a way to remind us of the previous legacy of the band. And for me, this would already be on my list as a YouTube song I genuinely like. But the fact that I've always liked this song since I was a little kid gives the extra points for nostalgia purposes. Now for number six, we go from one U2 song used in popular media to another. This song, once again, came off of their Juggernaut album, uh, their Juggernaut of an album, in Joshua Tree, and it was essentially the biggest hit off the album, which is debatable, at least in my opinion. Uh, it's still a great song. Uh, then almost an entire decade later, it was used a couple times on the show Friends. Yes, that's right, in the show where they'll be there for you, there was with or without you. If we look at this hit, at the hits from Joshua Tree, most of them aren't that sad. I mean, sure, Mothers of the Disappeared is literally about a mass kidnapping, but I'm talking specifically about breakups, sad love songs in general. And that's not a pool U2 likes to stick their toes into that much. So on this album, and in really any U2 medley, with or without you sticks out like a sore thumb. I don't know how many times I'm gonna say that in one video. I forgot that I already used that in the script when I was writing this, because it took many sittings to write this script. Uh, but that's what makes it so good. It doesn't really seem like a U2 song, that like a song that they would tackle, but with Edge's guitar and Bono's voice, it feels right at home. I also don't really like this kind of somber tone on a love song, but U2 just kills it. I mean, I also love Friends too, so that probably helped, but you know. For number five, I want to focus on a song that sounds like a piece of art. It literally sounds like art. I know music is art, but I'm talking about art. Because there's good U2 songs, and then there's songs that truly prove that music is art. I know I'm way overhyping this song for only being in the middle of my top ten list, but that's because these are my opinions, and I'm just taking some time to appreciate this one song. And my number five song is Where the Streets Have No Name. It begins with a breathtaking intro that's almost two whole minutes and is made all the better by the edge. It only gets better when Bono gets into it. It's about the band's native city in Ireland. And remember when I said that City of Blinding Lights is a night song? Well, Where the Streets Have No Name is the antithesis to that. It feels like the ambiance of a city in the early morning as the sun slowly rises. Notice how as the song progresses, the music seems to get faster and faster. And I see this as a metaphor for the transition from night to morning and then morning to day. Movements in life seem to accelerate at those times. And all I can say is that if this is where I'm at just the f at the number five, well, these next four songs are truly amazing then. Now it's time to finally give some more attention to the famed historical pieces of U2. The songs about any noteworthy event that changed the world in some way. Now, there aren't really that many songs by them that fits this description, but the fact that there's at least more than one is impressive. It's like that quote from, um, from Michael Scott. If I had a nickel for every time, I don't remember what the situation was, but every time something happened, I'd have two nickels, which is not a lot. But it's a surprise. It's surprising that it happened twice. This is, this is how I'm feeling with you too. They, they, do, not all the songs are historically based, but because there are a few of them, more than a usual band makes, it still sticks out. Um. Yeah, but really there are two options for the spot that fit my description. One is a riveting story of a courageous movement that ends in tragedy, and the other is Sunday Bloody Sunday. Yeah, I don't know why, I just really don't like Sunday Bloody Sunday all that much. So yeah, the number four spot on my list of favorite U2 songs is none other than Pride in the Name of Love. I said that weird, but it's because that's, that's how I feel like reading it every time I see the title, because Pride is in parentheses, so it's like Pride in the Name of Love. Which is, it's, if you didn't already know, it's about the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. The song beautifully encapsulates the inspirations and dreams behind the civil rights movement of the 1960s, and it's almost like the song is it's like the song form of an MLK biography. Uh, or, yeah. It's interesting to note that for a song that's about the average length of mainstream music, there's not that much lyrics at all. Like, if you look up the lyrics and realize just how much of the song is instrumental, it's pretty crazy. Number three is one of the first songs I ever heard by U2, and it's probably my biggest unpopular opinion, that I think this is the most famous U2 song ever. Which doesn't even make sense, because I'm realizing there are a ton of others. But, like, I see, I see that this gets a, a lot of, um, a lot of, you know, because... Sunday Bloody Sunday and With or Without You seem to be really high up there, but I think this song gets almost as much attention. 
Um, it's definitely, in my opinion, the best track on Joshua Tree. It's my favorite track on Joshua Tree. Um, and the song is Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For. This song speaks out to the listeners of Bono standing on a mountain and screaming whatever he's singing from the, from the top of the mountain. Uh, this is one of the most soothing songs by the band. It's a lot where, it's a lot like where the streets have no name in the sense of its morning ambiance. I think this is one of the best songs for someone to listen as a starter if they want to get into U2. It perfectly summarizes the inspiring kind of music that U2 makes. And hey, if it was a good start for me, it probably would be for anyone. So number two is almost neck and neck with number one. It's one of the more upbeat U2 songs, and by that I mean that it almost has no plot at all besides being about the singer's healthy infatuation with an anonymous woman. And... Not a lot of songs I feel about you 2 are about a woman, and uh, this one is, and uh, no song like you 2 has been, had this, like, same attitude towards that topic. Without a doubt, the best song in Octung Baby, the runner-up for me, is Mysterious Ways. And what's so artful about this song is that the descriptions of the woman in this song are vague and require some level of thought in order to interpret what Bono's even talking about. Some could even say that the descriptions are mysterious. This is such a brilliant song because U2 took a relatively simple and borderline cliche theme and made it into a song with complicated meaning. I mean, I could barely tell you what it is about besides he likes someone and She's got confusing dance moves. It's basically a perfect U2 song. Starts strong, finishes strong, and everything in between is awesome. Now, all that being said, there's one song that's even better than Mysterious Ways. It's one of those uplifting songs that's entire intention is just to remind us of the wonders of Earth. I feel like a lot of artists have at least one piece like this, but no band does it better than U2. We should get that on a shirt. Um, it's from the somewhat newer age of U2, has some amazing instruments and sounds, and the music video features Bono lying on a baggage claim conveyor belt. What else could it be? It's Beautiful Day. What is this song about? I don't know. The lyrics paint a pretty obvious picture. Bono is singing to someone who's lost their way in life, someone who's troubled and lonely, and he's reminding her just how beautiful each day is. Well, yeah, I mean, I figured out that much. But the best part of this song is the lyrics. It's starting with the part about the lost person, and then the bridge that has some very interesting lyrics speaking about all sorts of things, you know, all sites that the world has to offer, environmental issues like overfishing, and even a reference to the Old Testament. It's a beautiful day, and very fittingly, it's a beautiful song. So that's gonna wrap it up. You're welcome for having a much shorter video today. Uh, I am thanking myself also for being able and having the willpower to not make a 20 minute video again um besides that like last time because i got a lot of um a lot of uh praise from a growing population that right now just consists of my dad who liked me giving little uh hints to what the next um video will be so to um to uh, honor that small one person group of people um i'm going to do that again and the little uh little teaser for the next video i plan to make it's something you should obvi you should expect for me to make as you've, if you've seen my other content but my little bit of advice to figure out what uh my little bit of advice for people trying to figure out what video i'm going to do next is don't be stupid stupid Hi, I am the Everything Bagel Lawyer. Uh, sure, yes, I wear my hat this way. I am here to give a disclaimer to all of the viewers who might find my associate, Everything Bagel's, uh, parting words just a little bit offensive to you, for he did not tell you to not be stupid. He was not calling you stupid. He was just alluding to a famous quote from a famous man who lived for a very brief amount of time in the wild of Panama on a famous reality TV show he makes lots of videos about.